In today's Big Bang. Get your old lolly sticks to come back as a boomerang. Why you shouldn't be afraid of lifts? Honest. And make a Big Bang beatbox drum machine. To the Big Bang. Here's a puzzle for you. I have here a picture of the Union Jack. Gareth, it's the wrong colours. Yeah, I know that. The puzzle is to turn it back to its proper colours. Well, maybe you could just paint it the right colours. Mm, you hardly have to do anything at all. Have a look at the flag. There's a clue there. That black dot in the middle. Mm. What does it do? Mm, have a think about it and I'll give you the solution at the end of the show. Boomerang! Boomerang! Boomerangs are harder to throw and catch than they are to make. You'll need three lolly sticks, three bits of card and some sticky stuff. Start by sticking the lolly sticks in an equal triangle. I'm using tacky blue stuff, but glue works best. And make sure the triangle is as big as you can get it. You've now got a kind of a bowl shape. So get the bits of card and stick those at the end. This card is about three quarters of the length of the lolly stick, but experiment with different sizes and you'll get different effects. And there, your boomerang is ready to fly. To throw your boomerang, hold it upright, tilt it out slightly, move your wrist back, and when you throw it, flick your wrist so it spins really quickly. And it will come back to you. Now, even though you have to tilt it out, don't let it go flat. And even though it goes round in a circle, throw it straight, not round. Well, one out of two is not bad. Your boomerang comes back because it's spinning. The top wing is spinning in the direction of flight, so it's moving through the air more quickly than the bottom wing. Now, the faster something moves, the more lift it makes, so the boomerang tries to twist, and this has the effect of steering it back round in a circle. So, in theory, your boomerang should come back. There's more information on boomerangs on the Big Bang webpage. Want to be an ace detective, Cynthia? Then you need to get clued up on fingerprints. Here are two things about fingerprints. Can you tell which one is the big fib? Fact or fib? The fingerprints of the Russian brown bear are almost identical to those of humans. Several times the Russian police have mistakenly accused bears of serious crimes. Fact or fib? Baby's fingerprints don't last as long as those of an adult. Fingerprints are left by sweat and oils, but the oils on a baby's fingers are different, and their prints vanish in just a few hours. So which is the big fib? Make your choice now. Well, it's true that baby's fingerprints disappear, so the big fibber is earnest. A Russian bear's fingerprints don't look anything like a human's. But a koala bear's fingerprints do. So watch out, that cuddly koala could be framing an innocent person. Beatbox drum machines. They work like this. When you turn the barrel, that twangs these twangy things, which makes the air in the tubes vibrate. And because the tubes are different lengths, you get different notes. They work rather like one of those old musical boxes that you might just have at home. If you look inside a musical box, you can see a barrel. On that barrel are lots of sticky-up bits. And those sticky-up bits twang sticky-out bits of metal, producing a lovely noise. To make a beatbox drum machine, get a big box and five of these poster tubes. You can get them from the stationers or a post office. 
get someone who's good with a craft knife to cut them into five different lengths. You can choose your own lengths or check out the Big Bang website for suggestions. Get five plastic cups and glue to the top of each one one of those paper fasteners. Then cut away most of the plastic cup till you're left with something that looks like that. Then pop that on top of your poster tube and tape it in position so it's good and solid. And put a bit of tape around the top of the paper fastener so when you twang it, it makes a good sound. Then tape all your poster tubes in a row to a nice firm piece of card. Now cut a flap in the box and fold it under to stiffen this bit here. Get another poster tube, slice it in half lengthwise, put half there, half there, and then cut a notch in either side as well. The barrel's really easy. All it is is a poster tube with the lids on, hole in the middle, and a piece of garden cane through. You'll need a handle on your barrel. That's just a clothes peg glued in position there. Then you'll need something to twang the twangy bits. Take a pencil, cut it into little bits, and then glue the little bits on your barrel. Pop your barrel into the slots and secure it in place with a couple of elastic bands like that. One on that side, one for the other side. And it's really important to position the whole thing carefully so that the pencils and the paper fasteners are just touching. And when I turn this now slowly and towards me, you should hear the scale. One thing left, and that's to decorate your beatbox so it looks as good as it sounds. And if you want, you can make other barrels so you've got different tunes. big idea is about an American who liked to think big. He lived 150 years ago when the only thing called a skyscraper was a kind of very tall hat. His name was... Elisha Graves Otis. At your service, ma'am. But it's thanks to him we have the kind of skyscrapers we know today. People had always wanted to build really tall buildings, but there was a problem they could only build a few floors up. Because the only way to get to the top was to climb the stairs. Ma'am? But Elisha Graves Otis invented a safe way to move people up and down buildings without getting puffed out. Lifts and hoists had been around for years, but they were death traps. They were mainly used for moving cargo around factories because if the rope broke, the platform would plummet. Understandably, people were terrified of lifts. Yeah! People terrified of lifts! Elisha Otis wasn't a trained engineer, but he did have a knack for solving problems. He came up with an ingenious device. If I equip each elevator shaft with a set of metal teeth down the side like this, and then attach to the elevator car a mechanism which will prevent the car from falling if the rope breaks, then that ought to do it. This was a really clever bit. It was the weight of the lift on the rope that kept the arms in place. Then if the rope broke, the arms automatically sprang out, wedging in the teeth at the sides of the lift shaft, preventing the lift from falling. 
100% safe. It was a brilliant big idea, but sadly... People still terrified of lifts. So, Otis's next big idea was how to sell his invention to the American people. He went to the World's Fair in New York to stage a demonstration of what he called his safety hoist. With much showmanship, he rode an elevator high into the air. Then he asked his assistant to cut the rope with a dramatic flourish. All safe, gentlemen. All safe. To spread the word, Otis and his sons took his amazing demonstration on tour across America. It was a wonder. Uh, excuse me? Ah, uh, sorry. Anyway, eventually it had the desired effect. People no longer terrified of lifts. Sixty-seventh floor, please, ma'am. Which meant that engineers could start to design very tall buildings, like the Eiffel Tower and the Empire State Building. So at last there was something worthy of the name Skyscraper. Because, let's face it, Skyscraper was a very silly name for a hat, however tall it was. Jewellery, treasure and keepsakes. They need guarding. And I've just the thing. Rumple up some foil, then jab a couple of pens in at right angles. Thread some string through the pen holes. It'll jam when you pull it tight, but slacken the string and the foil will fall. With a lick of paint and some pipe cleaner legs, you've made a scary security spider. Finally, set the trap for any lurking thieves. Garrus puzzle then. He wanted us to turn the Union Jack the right colours without painting it. Now I've been experimenting with using sweet wrappers as different coloured filters. It's not really working but I might have to try a few more just to be sure. You eat as many sweets as you like it's not going to help. Look I'll show you the way to do this right. I want you to do this at home as well. Violet and you guys stare at this flag. I want you to keep staring don't look away and it will definitely work for you. There is a tiny black dot in the centre that will help you concentrate. Keep looking at it. Keep looking I'm at it. I'm concentrating but it's still yellow green and black. Stay with it. Whatever you do don't look away. I'm going to make a change. Are you ready? I want you to look at the screen stay looking at the screen what can you see now absolutely nothing stay with it you'll get uh, an after image yeah it's red white and blue it's brilliant this is all to do with the way that we see colors you see different cells in your eyes see different colors and by staring at that funny colored flag I tired out some of those cells so instead when I presented you with white you saw the opposite colors well that was absolutely astounding and there are lots of other astounding funny colored pictures on our website along with details on everything else we've made in today's show. That's it for now. See you next time on... The, the Big, Big Bang. Bang! That worked the treat, yeah, didn't it? In the next Big Bang, a game that will test your nerve. A big idea about neon signs. And grow your own crystal sculptures.